Before I get started, I want to ask you a question, and that is, have you ever thought to yourself, what if I lost my job? What would I do? What would happen to my family if my employer went out of business or they fired me? You know, what, what would I do? What would happen next? And, um, or, and then you say to yourself, ah, no, nah, but that's okay. You know, I've got a job. This company's been in business forever. They've been here for years and they're going to be here, you know, all the time. And see, that's the problem, guys, is that most people think that you just go get a good job and you've got an employer and your employer is going to take care of you for the next 50 years of your life and you're going to retire and you're going to live happily ever after. And that is just not true. You know, it is super risky to be employed by a single person. That one person has your entire future, all of your income in the palm of their hands. And, you know, it's almost like gambling when you put all of your efforts, all of your future, all of your hopes into somebody else. You have absolutely no control of your life. You may think you do. You may think, well, I'll just put in my time. I'll move forward. But eventually, if something happens, you're the one that's going to be out of luck, not the other people. You know, the truth is there is not any safety in employment through one person. There is no safety in having a job where you work for somebody else because all of the control is in their favor. The ball is completely in their court. Jocelyn and I believe the only way you can truly be secure is if you work for yourself. And you might say, well, that's risky. I'm, I got to go out and I got to do this and I got to do that. And, you know, what if I fail or what if this fails? And, you know, at least you're saying to yourself in those situations, what if I fail? You give yourself the power to go out and succeed or, or to fail. You don't put it in your hopes and all your dreams in somebody else. And what well, got me thinking about this topic today, because you're probably like, Shane, you haven't worked for anybody in six years. You and Jocelyn have been self-employed for almost six years now. Uh, you, you know, you've grown multiple businesses, flip lifestyles, huge and blah, blah, blah. So why are you even thinking about this? And the reason I'm thinking about this is because Jocelyn and I had a five hour drive yesterday. Uh, from Paducah, Kentucky, back to our hometown. And we got to talking about a, a hilarious story that happened when I was a football coach because we looked over and there, uh, as we were driving home and we saw four or five dogs laying on the ground. And Jocelyn just started giggling in the car. And I said, what are you laughing at? And she said, do you remember that story about them dogs? And I just started dying laughing because uh, of this kid who used to play football for me. Now, he was a... Uh, he was a good football player, had a great nature. He was a great kid. But let's just say he was not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Y'all see what I'm saying? What, what did, did not exactly have a lot of intelligence running around up here in his old brain, okay? But he was a great kid, uh, came from the you know poor side of town, other side of tracks, and uh, he always needed a ride home from football practice. So uh, when he, the first day he ever came to practice, he did great. We were like, he's like, hey, Coach, uh, Hey, Coach uh, Sams, I need to ride home. I need to ride home, Coach. <laughs> and I said, "All right, we're, well, let's let's go take you home. Where do you, where do you live?" And he goes, "I don't know where I live." And I looked at him and I said, "How do you not know where you live?" And he said, "No, Coach, I know where I live, and I live by this uh, near this grocery store. You know where that grocery store is?" And I was like, "Okay, son, yeah, I know where that grocery store is, but where do you live after that? What's your address?" And he said, "I don't know my address." I <laughs> sort of like. Okay, but how do you know how to get home? And he said, well, here's what you do, coach. Get in the car. Let's go to that grocery store, and then I'll tell you how to get there. So, you know, the, get in the car. He starts driving down. We get to this grocery store, and uh, and I say, all right, where do we go now? Do we make a left? Do we make a right? Do we go straight? And he goes, uh, we make a right. I said, okay, which road do we turn right at? And he goes, I don't know what road we turn right at, coach. But uh, just look for them dogs. Them dogs are always sitting there. And if you just keep going straight ahead, we'll turn right at them dogs. I always turn right at them dogs and I get home. And I looked over at him and I said, them dogs, is there a dog kennel? Does somebody own a dog and it's tied up to their porch? And he goes, nope, just four stray dogs. They're always sitting right there on that corner. And whenever I see them dogs, I take a right. So we, I'm like, this guy, this kid's crazy. So we start pulling ahead and we keep going, drive out in the middle of nowhere in an off-road county in Kentucky. And we, and we look over, and sure enough, there was four dogs sitting there. And I was waiting for them to be tied up on a rope or in a kennel or something. No, them dogs were just sitting there. These were stray dogs. These were just random wild dogs that were sitting on this corner. And we took a ride, and we kept going down this holler, and he finally said, that's my house. And we pulled up, and I said, uh, stop, and I said, are you going to need a ride every day? And he said, yeah. And I said, 
let me ask you a question. If I don't take you, no one else is going to know how to get out here. You live in the middle of nowhere. Don't you think you need a better landmark than them dogs? Because them dogs could get up and move. Them dogs could get run over by a car and die and not be there anymore. Them dogs could get picked up by the dog catcher or something, right? And he goes, no, coach, them dogs are always there. And he just walked into his house with pure faith that the, them dogs would just be sitting there and he would always know how to get home. And we laugh. We laugh. So That's such a funny story because Jocelyn and I, anytime we see dogs like that, we say, there's some dogs. Turn right at them dogs. And, uh, and we laugh at that story and we laugh at this kid and we think, oh, man, that poor kid, bless his heart. He just, he's not the smartest kid. But then we do it. We all do it. We, we, we get a job. We get a J-O-B working for one other person. And we say, oh, it's okay. Everything's going to be okay. I'm going to have a paycheck uh, next month because of th them bosses, <laughs> them jobs, that corporation. We all say that. And it's crazy because just like that kid was putting his faith in them dogs to get home, our society thinks we have to put our faith in an employer to make a living, right? But really, that employer could move just like them dogs. That employer could go out of business just like them dogs could get run over by a car and they're not there anymore. Then the, the dog catcher can come get them dogs. Well, guess what? Your employer could get in trouble and get arrested. And, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on. And I don't say this flippantly because this exact thing, thing, this total fluke happened to me one time. Jocelyn and I were uh, at a school district. I was the football coach at a high school. And, you know, we thought this is the most stable, secure job you could ever have. I mean, this isn't even a private sector job. This is a government job. There's always going to be a school in this county, right? So there was a North High School and there was a South High School. There were two high schools in this county. They had already shrunk from like seven high schools down to two at one point. And we thought we could retire there. We thought, hey, we'll be here forever. This job will always be here for us. We'll stick around. We'll get tenure. What could go wrong, right? The most stable, secure job you could ever have. Well, guess what? One year out of nowhere, five new school board members got onto the school board and they voted, this county voted out of nowhere, totally blindsided everybody to consolidate the two schools. Well, guess what? If you've got two schools, and then all of a sudden you have one school. Well, you had two football teams with two head coaches. Guess how many you got now? One, and they picked the other guy. So here this stable, secure job that I had that I thought could have my health insurance and pay my bills and give me all these opportunities, right? And my life for my family was gone in a moment because of the whim of some voters, right? So just like them dogs could get up and move, just like your employer could leave, just like your, the school could consolidate or, you know, cut all the teachers because, you know, none of our state governments are funding anybody's, you know, pensions or salaries anymore. If we put our faith to take care of our families in somebody else's hands, it could go away just like that. And I was thinking about that story this morning, and it really got me thinking about a lot of people who come in and they're like, well, I'm okay. I've got a good job. Well, I'm okay. I'll be all right. I'll do this. I'll, I got a good employer, but that employer could disappear on you. You have no security when you work for somebody else. Your security is at the whim of the person that is in charge of your company. I hate that. I hate that it's like that, but it is. There is no secure job because people make mistakes and their businesses go out of business. How do you know for sure? Now think about this. You may think that your employer is making tons of money hands over fist, but all of a sudden, you don't see the books. You don't know they could be in massive debt, and they may be one month away from not being able to pay the salaries of anybody on their staff. You just don't know it. It's a fear, and that fear of that lives in our minds. It's like a ghost that haunts us, and we wonder, is our next paycheck going to come? Is our next paycheck going to be there? Is anything safe and secure, right? And what Joss and I figured out, because of a lot of terrible circumstances in our life, losing jobs, evil bosses, is that the only people we can count on is ourselves. We have to go out and we have to promote our own business. We gotta go sell something. We gotta go spread the risk around. You know, Jocelyn and I have sold thousands of memberships across the world in various niches to people everywhere you can imagine, every US state and dozens of countries all over the world. People have bought 
you know, digital products, lesson plans, and they've signed up for recurring memberships where they pay month after month, right? And we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of customers. If one of our customers fires us or two of our customers decide they run out of money and they can't pay the bill next month, it's not like we have to worry about that because everything else will absorb it. We've spread our risk so wide. Not only do we have true security because we work for ourselves instead of somebody else, and we have true safety in our business because we are the ones that we can trust to put in the work. I saw Marcy put into the comments just now. Uh, she calls it Me Inc. That's right. Me and Jocelyn call it Us Inc. Marcy, because me and her, you know what I'm saying? So Me Inc., Us Inc., We Inc., doesn't matter. But we have taken total control of our finances, total control of our time, because we are no longer relying on someone else to pay our bills. That's where true security and safety comes from. You have to work for yourself. You've got to go out and do it. And we have this incredible tool that our, you know, even our moms and dads, you know, 25 years ago did not have, and that's called the internet. We don't have to, you know, a lot of people used to say, well, I don't want to go in business for myself. I live in a small town, man. There's just not enough customers. There's, you know, Joe on the corner is already selling what I want to sell or Sally over there has already opened the store that I want to offer. It don't matter anymore, guys. you got the internet. We ain't looking for them dogs sitting on the corner. We're not looking for them dogs. We've got people everywhere, 4 billion people that are already connected to the internet, more coming on every day. And all you need is like 100 of them to give you 50 bucks and you're going to make $5,000 a month. That's $60,000 a year. You need like 100 people in the world. And then if 10 of those people decide not to buy from you the next month, you still got the other 90. It's not like your boss when he says, hey, I've decided that you're fired and I'm not going to pay you next month. Mm -hmm. Then you're gone. Then you're screwed. You got nothing. Zero. Zilch. So here's the, here's the moral of the story today, y'all, is don't trust them dogs. <laughs> if you're trying to get home and you're looking for them dogs that are always sitting on that corner, they might have got up and chased a rabbit. They might have got up and left. They might be under a cut bus somewhere. They don't, I don't know where they are, but them dogs are going to get up and leave eventually. And you are the one who's not going to figure out how to get home. You're the one who's not going to figure out how am I going to pay my lights next month? How am I going to pay my rent next month? How am I going to put food on the table next month? And now you're scrambling for another person to take care of you when really you can totally take care of yourself. It, and I know because I've seen thousands of people do it through the Flip Your Life community, through the Flip Lifestyle podcast. Joss and I get emails every single week of people selling everything you can imagine online. We, we were talking to someone the other day on a member call, and she was selling, uh, she sold cashmere goat fur. That's right, cashmere goat fur. I'm not talking about, you know, go teach people how to make money online. I'm not telling you to go be a life coach. None of that stuff. I'm saying you can make money in any way you figure it out. If you can find something that you do that somebody else wants, you will find someone who's connected to the internet that will send you money for it. And then you don't have to rely on them dogs no more. Okay? So I was fired up today. I just want to jump on here and get that off my chest. One, because that is a hilarious story. That's one of the funniest stories I've ever seen in my life when that kid was trying to get home and he was using dogs and inanimate and, 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 uh, and uh, living creatures that were wandering the forest to get home. And it made me really think about all y'all out there that are scared of trying to make money online, scared of trying to start your own business because you think it's risky. What you're doing is infinitely riskier than what we and thousands of people like us and hundreds of people in the Flip Your Life community are doing. I get up every day and feel safe and secure and we made money last night while we slept. And yeah, it's true, 100%. And I have this little cool thing in my uh, report that says future income report. Click. And it actually takes all the math of the average monthly member, how long they stay. It actually looks at all the data coming in through our sales funnels. And it can predict within like 10% how much money we're going to make in the next 12 months. There is no way that you can possibly predict if you'll be employed in a year. You can't do that. There's no way you can do that. You can't predict what your boss is going to do, what your job is going to do, your corporation, your government, if they change the taxes. How'd you like to be working for Delta in Atlanta, Georgia right now when they just took $50 million from them? You can't control all that, but you can control hustle. You can control ideas coming out of your mind and going into reality, and you can control signing up for PayPal and starting a website, and you can, you can control that. You can control every bit of that. And you can control going out and finding customers and telling them why your stuff's awesome and selling it to them. That's what you can control. You don't control them dogs, okay? 
All right, guys. So I love you guys. Thank you for listening to this epic rant. If you did not hear the story about the dogs and the directions, please rewind this. It will make your day. You will laugh hearing me and my redneck high end telling that story because it makes me laugh every time I think about it and has for almost 20 years. And um, yeah, Lori says you control your raises. Oh, listen, that's, I love that, Lori. That's amazing because that is something that Jocelyn and I say every single morning. Now think about this. How long has it been since you've had a raise? You talk about not being able to control anything. How many times you ask for a raise and your boss said, no, no I, ain't, I don't have any money. I can't give you a raise. And you're like, dang, I hope I get a raise next year. And then you go back again next year and they say, hey, can I get a raise? Uh, no, sorry, I don't have any money for a raise. I don't have any Christmas bonus this year. Let me tell you something. Joss and I every day look at each other in the car. We drop off the kids uh, at school and we look at each other and we say, how are we going to give ourselves a raise today? And I got a buddy that I'm in a mastermind with, and every day on Boxer, man, it's, hey, how are we going to give ourselves a raise this month? How are we going to get a raise every day, baby, a raise every day? And we can control that because if I just go out and go sleeve up, sleeve up, type an email, make a video, do something online, guess what? I get three new members. They're paying, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks a month, depending on what business that we're in, and bam, I got a $300 raise next month. If I go sell 100 of them, and I got $50 a month, bam, I just gave myself a $5,000 raise. That is 100% true, Lori. That, this is the only place, in online, online business is the only place where you can give yourself a raise every day. Give yourself a raise every day. If you got a street corner shop, you can't control that, right? But you can give yourself a raise every day when you flip your life, y'all. That is so true, Lori. Thank you for saying that. And uh, Lori says, online business is practically zero expense. It's just your time and hustle. That's right. And you got to do it from home. Imagine not having a commute anymore. You can't control that. You know, you think, oh, I got an hour and a half commute. My boss makes me come in. My boss doesn't let me come in because I'm my boss, right? Uh, Kathy Middlestutter says, don't rely on them. Gotcha. That's right. You can only rely on yourself. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Your, yourself, your loved ones, and the people that care about you. Your boss doesn't care because your boss has to pay bills. And your boss cares more about the bills than he does you. That's the truth. He's like them dogs. They don't care. If the dogs are hungry, the dogs will get up and walk away and get something to eat. Okay? All right. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of comments here. I'm, I'm going to read a couple of these comments. Uh, Marcy says, let's see here. Let me scroll up here a little bit. Marcy says, uh, absolutely true security and safety comes from you. That is true. Mark Miller says, uh, he's got an awesome post there about the career from a turkey's perspective. All right. So everybody click on that and uh, read Mark's post. And uh, the final comment I've got, Marcy says, flip lifestyle will change your life. Do the work. Invest in yourself. You are worth it. Believe you can. And that is so true. Every minute you spend in someone else's employment is not an investment in your family's future. It is an investment in their family's future, not yours. You need to go out and you need to figure out how you can solve someone's problem, how you can turn that into a digital product, and how you can sell it online and then how you can get people to pay you month after month, year after year for it. That's what's going to put you in total control of your life. That's what's going to help you flip your life. If we can help you do it, we'd love to help you do it. That's what Joss and I do. We dedicate our entire lives to helping other families free themselves from the uncertainty of a nine to five job and go to business for themselves, work for me, Inc., us, Inc., and get it going for themselves. So make sure you go Click on that link up there. If you're not a member of the Flip Your Life community, we'd love to have you. We'd love to help you build and grow your online business. i got a dollar trial for you in the link. You can cancel any time. Try it out. And uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Love y'all. I'm out. I'm going to go down the street. I'm going to uh, head over to somebody's house, and I ain't going to look for dogs for directions. Peace. I'm out. <laughs> Later.